Hello and welcome to an Envato TUS Plus tutorial. I'm Adi Pordilla and today we're talking about website pop-ups. And there's a, a bit of controversy surrounding these elements. A lot of people say they're disruptive and should be avoided, but actually they can be very good if done right. So in this tutorial we'll explore what pop-ups are all about, have a look at a few types, uh, see why people dislike them so much and also uh, have a look at a few best practices for making these work. So let's begin with what are pop-ups. A pop-up is a small UI element that will uh, appear in the foreground of a website. Uh, typically they look like a modal window but there are uh, a few other types. Here's an example from flightclub.com. This appears as a modal window so you have to click away or click the X button to close it. It's also an overlay pop-up or an interstitial because it covers the entire screen with that uh, semi-transparent overlay. Here's an example of a pop-up that slides in from the side. Uh, this is the website of Peter Shankman. Another example would be the Envision website that shows a fixed cookie policy pop-up at the bottom left of the screen. And these are probably the most common pop-ups you've seen lately because of the new GDPR laws regarding cookies and online tracking. If you don't know what that's all about, uh, check out the links in the written version. Pop-ups can also be displayed at the top or bottom of the page as notification bars like we see on the Zendesk website. They can also be fixed in that position. So why are pop-ups disliked by so many people? Well, let's find out. The main reason is that pop-ups are disruptive. They disrupt, they interrupt your focus, your attention, your flow when, you know, browsing a website. Here you are reading something and all of a sudden this window pops up right in the middle of the screen with some kind of promotion. And even worse are the pop-ups that actually are not relevant to what you were reading, like pop-ups with ads. Those are uh, very, very annoying. Now, there's a time and place for, um, for pop-ups, and if done right, they can actually improve uh, the conversion rate of a website. We'll talk about that in a bit. But in most cases, they are done poorly. Now, not all people hate pop-ups. In fact, marketers or people in charge of marketing love them because they give them um, a place or they give them the means to focus or to draw the user's attention to a very specific thing. And that can be a promotion, an ad, whatever it is. Uh, and that, studies show, uh, can increase conversion. So that's a very good thing. Uh, also, there's something to be said about mobile pop-ups. Google is actually issuing penalties to um, mobile websites that use interstitials, pop-ups that hide the majority of the page content, or pop-ups that um, show up on the first page. You can still use these elements on mobile without penalty in some cases, and Google shows some examples here like cookie usage, age verification, and overall pop-ups that don't take up a lot of screen real estate. This article is uh, linked down below if you want to check it out. Now let's look at three reasons why you should be using pop-ups. Number one, their attention grabbing. A study conducted by Microsoft shows that people nowadays have the attention span of about eight seconds. And that's one second lower than the attention span of a goldfish. <laughs> I kid you not. So uh, being able to grab a user's attention just for a few seconds is critical. In those few seconds, we can show users content that they might otherwise miss. And that in turn can lead to uh, an increased conversion rate. Number two, uh, they declutter your website. So by placing certain types of content in pop-ups, you make sure that your actual content, the content of your website is displayed without any distractions and in a very clean way. Number three, they're totally customizable 
And here I'm talking looks, but also functionality. Because these are basically built with HTML and CSS, there is no limit to how you can customize them. And because um, you, you, you're using JavaScript to determine when you can display them, uh, you have a lot of freedom there as well. You can display them um, on page load, when you scroll to a, to a specific element, when you click a specific element, or when you want to exit the page. That's called an exit intent. I'm sure you've seen these around. You move your mouse cursor outside of the uh, viewport, and that triggers a pop-up saying, hey, don't leave. Here's an offer for you. Now, with these things in mind, let's have a look at uh, some best practices. Number one, consistency. Your pop-ups need to follow the same style as your website. And a lot of people make the mistake of just downloading a pop-up template from the web, slapping it to their website without ever changing the colors or the fonts. They just leave it as it is. And that's a big no-no. You should always make sure that uh, your typography is consistent, your colors are consistent, and also the actual content in the pop-up is presented you know, in the same style as the content on your website. A good example here is the Flight Club website. The colors are the same as the main website, typography is the same, and even the style of the buttons is the same. Number two, make them responsive. Uh, nowadays, the majority of us have smartphones and we consume a lot of content on our smartphones. So make sure your pop-ups are displayed correctly on smartphones, but also, you know, on larger devices like a laptop or a desktop. Number three, keep your copy short and to the point. Uh, don't use too much text because nobody wants to read a novel in your pop-up. Nobody's going to have the patience to do that. Number four, don't collect more information than necessary. In most cases, an email address is more than enough. Uh, so don't overcomplicate things because nobody likes filling in long forms. Number five, don't show the same pop-up to the same user multiple times. Uh, chances are if a user saw your pop-up and did nothing, it means that he's not interested. So don't show him that same pop-up again and again and again. It's just going to annoy him. Um, I guess you could show it one more time just in case he misclicked the first time, but that's pretty much it. And finally, number six, display pop-ups where they are relevant. So if you're running multiple pop-ups on the same website, display them where uh, the content is relevant to the pop-up. So for example, if you're running a I don't know, a food blog. Uh, there's no point in um, displaying pop-ups about football, right? It, it just doesn't make any sense. So always make sure that your pop-up is displayed in the pages with relevant content. And those are the six best practices. There's a lot more to talk about on the subject, but I don't want to make this a very long video. So I gave you what I consider to be the six most important best practices you can use when it comes to uh, pop-ups on the web. Now, if you want to learn more about creating pop-ups, I linked a tutorial uh, to another video about creating pop-ups with Elementor, which is a WordPress plugin. So go ahead and check that out uh, if you want to learn more. It's a really powerful plugin. So, um, it really makes things very, very easy for you. That's it for me. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I'm Adi. Until next time, take care.